Hey, so uh, you probably clicked on this because you're probably trying to troubleshoot what's going on with your ride. But uh, these are old school, like 70s, 80s, maybe even 90s uh, coils and coil canisters. And uh, this is what they used to look like before, you know, solid state really, really took over. But I wanted to go ahead and make this video. And uh, there's some good information I wanted to share. And that way you won't be in the dark. Maybe you saw a few things and you're like, man, I don't know. So anyways, you'll notice that one canister, the gray one, says external resistor required. Now, if you ohm out the two posts over here and over there, the value would be very, very low. It'd be like 1.5 or 1.8, somewhere around there. That's, that's very, very low, and that'll create a lot of power, and this thing will get really hot if you hooked it up. So you're actually supposed to use an external resistor. Now, I don't know anything about that. I've never done it, and I don't have time to figure that out. I'm putting this thing back to factory, and this guy's receiving a solid you know, 12, 6, 13, 14 volts. So um, there, this is already has a resistor in it. So if you own this guy out that says uh, not, you know, no external, then, um, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You don't need a resistor. So my ohms are like, th like three, I think, on this one. I owned it out yesterday. So this one has twice the resistance of what this one, this one does. All right. So uh, assuming you know how to use a multimeter. So, and then you go from the actual <coughs> secondary and the, the big guy is the secondary, the little guy is the primaries, right? Uh, if you look on the top, like you'll see positive and negative anyways. It doesn't matter what, what post you own them out on. And, uh, excuse me, I'm driving here and trying to do two things at once because I feel like this is just a good video and somebody out there is, is going to be asking, what the heck, man, what the heck? All right. So, um, told you basically about the resistors and what the value should look like. So, again, these should be about uh, no resist, you know, that'll be about 1.5 ish and this one will be about twice it'll be about three ohms so and these get hot all right so if you hook this directly up this will get way too hot and this will burn up very very quickly so all right so uh let's see now if you shake these if you shake these you will hear, hear liquid inside that is actually some kind of special oil you can look that up online if you really want to know what kind of oil they put in there i don't know but it's to help keep it cool that's how these things work and if you see these leaking in like basically gooey uh it needs to be replaced it's it's no longer doing its job it's just old and it you know it's it's time to get rid of it okay so leaking replace it now uh these are sitting in my car because i have a very odd issue and it makes total sense that uh this one is bad this one's brand new but they sold me the wrong one so uh, without going further into that uh, my, my, my symptom is engine comes on, everything runs, everything runs, and I, I run the engine. Well, this is on a boat, but that doesn't matter. Same thing applies if you're on the freeway and, and you're running, you know, uh, the, the engine's working, it's been running for a while, things are starting to get hot. Uh, um, e even not just running at high idle, but, but running for a while. And then you go back down idle and your engine stalls, engine stalls. You're like, what the heck, man? The engine was cold, everything was fine. Everything was fine, everything's running fine. I haven't made any carburetor adjustments. I haven't made any other adjustments. Nothing else has changed. I, I, I don't have any check engine lights on, you know, assuming that vehicle with these has a OBD2 because they won't. But uh, that's your symptom. Everything runs fine, cool. You let it cool off and it runs fine. So what happens, this is a little bit of physics for you, is is when anything heats up, anything at all, it just doesn't behave the same. It won't conduct a message the same thing. Uh, just, just atoms don't, don't, uh, don't act normal. And, and what is happening on this guy? I, I would put my paycheck on, which is three cents right now, <laughs> right now. Anyways, I would put money on because my readings look normal on this guy. But when he's heating up. And there's, for an extensive amount of time, um, if he's swelling, 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 and I have a fault on the inside of this guy. Now, that oil will break down. The oil will break down in these eventually, and you have to replace them. There, there's, you know, there's warranties on these things. So nothing lasts forever. So after so many times of cycling, that little plastic in there, the insulators and vinyl, whatever they use inside of here that insulates it, um, 
it uh, um, it just degrades, and and my ohm reading is going to change. What and so that means that on the secondary outputting, the spark is not going to be the same. All right, and so that'll cause the engine to stall after running for so long, or hell, even the ignition switch being turned on. You don't even have to run it at high RPMs. Eventually, it'll stall, and then you have to wait, you know, a minute or two. And you're like, what the hell is going on? So that this is, uh, you know, a great start. They're not too much. You know, 20, 40 bucks, whatever, depending on where you shop. So uh, definitely worth a shot. And, and like I said, you'll go to take it off, and, you, and you'll read it out, and it'll read fine. You're like, hey, man, I'm not changing that. It reads out fine. No, no, no. So just a little piece of advice. I, I would, I would uh, change, change it out if that's your symptom. All right? Well, best of luck. Subscribe.